Yeah. So you know how like in the movies they get the clacker? Mm -hmm. well, that's what I call it. I don't know what it's actually yeah. called. And they go like, yeah, like that. Oh, the okay. Where you just see the hand coming in out of nowhere. It's just action. Like that. <laughs> so it's essentially the same thing. Oh, right? Okay. So you're using your hands. How are you doing, mom? Good. How are you doing? It's nine o'clock in the morning. Nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Still trying to wake up. Still trying to wake up. <laughs> Face um, is probably swollen. Um, I took my pre-workout, so I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good getting into this podcast. Yes. With you. It's funny because before we started this podcast, you just told me right now, are you going to introduce me as well? Yeah, I didn't know. Were you embarrassed of that? Or no, you just kind of like, no, no, you're... no. Okay. Because this is the thing, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. When it comes to like business and stuff, one thing that's smart to do is let's just say you have an idea. Like for instance, this podcast is very much my business that I believe in 100%, mm -hmm. right? Usually whenever you have business ideas, the first people you go to are typically your family and friends, right? Yes. Your close friends that are considered mm -hmm. to be family, right? Yeah. So I was the start of all this. So yeah. So if you <laughs> want to take it like that, yes, you were the start. You were the start. Okay. Mm -hmm. From Hell, day one. From day one. Can I say your birthday on here? Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You know, go, go, go ahead. Say what you want. From the start, twelve thirty one oh one. Twelve thirty one oh one six six one. Bakersfield stand up. Yep. <laughs> Hell yeah. That was day one. Okay. Day one. Day mm -hmm. one. That's crazy. It's almost 21 years mm -hmm. later. It's funny because I tell people all the time that my birthday is on December 31st. And they're uh -huh. like, oh my God, you're a New Year's baby. Whoop. Yeah. Right. And Everybody you don't even parties. Party hard. Every, I don't really party hard like that. <laughs> you don't always, party at all. I really don't party like that. Yeah. Like, I'm just more so just to myself, you know? Yeah, and I'm like, chill. always trying to figure out the next thing to do. What's next? Mm -hmm. What's next for my life? Right. And I think you know that. Okay. So you're going to be 21 though this year i am gonna be 21 do you feel pressured now like oh i'm 21 i'm gonna have to go out to a club or do you kind of right. feel like yeah no they're too like what is how do you say it like they're yeah uh well me and me and me this is the thing right me and natalia we went we went to the um i forgot what the club was called but we went to the club one time and it's not like that i don't go out and do that but like it's it's just not my first thing to go do like if you were to ask me like oh what do you want to go do today right mm -hmm. typically my first response my first response would usually be somewhere like in the woods right like let's go to the woods oh, yeah. or like let's go hiking let's go working out let's go mm -hmm. do something right yeah but the club or the bar or just like stuff like that is not usually not my go-to mm -hmm. it's not my go-to mm -hmm. right and so do I think the age 21 is going to make that any different now? I, I, I yeah. don't. But uh, where I was getting with that is it's funny because I'll tell people that though real quick. Usually the girls, right? Usually mm -hmm. the girls real quick will be like, oh, that means you're a Capricorn. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. We go to the. The, the, yeah. the astrology. <laughs> like what? You you, yeah. you know, it's crazy that there actually are people out there who base their everyday life decisions off of that. Yeah. Like, what do you think about astrology? I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'm. I obviously I look at it every now and then. When I say every now and then, it's like maybe once, yeah. twice a year. And they're on point. They yeah. really are on point. But me and my spiritual walk with God, like yeah. I'm more like, well, I'm gonna lean on God, you know. Mm -hmm. But and uh, I believe more in that than sitting here going, oh, astrology, astrology, yeah. and like you know, constantly daily mm -hmm. into that the whole card thing, palm reading, all that. Yeah. No, I'm good. Yeah. So no, I'll pass. I'd rather. It's it's crazy because, like how I said, there's people who literally base their everyday mm -hmm. decisions and everyday life off of that, yeah. right? I talked to this one person one time, and she was all like, "Yeah, I was talking to this guy, and he was all good. He was cool and all that, but I found out he was a whatever, whatever. Like I don't know what she, sign she said, oh, set. Uh -huh. but she she basically said that she found out he was a certain sign, and then ever since then she kind of like looked at him different, yeah, as if he wasn't the person before, right? Like yeah. as if he had just done something crazy, yeah, to make her look at him different like that. Oh, okay. But the only reason she looked at him different was because, because of his, his sign. astrology mm -hmm. sign, right? That's and she was crazy. like, oh no, 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 see, yeah. They you're believe the, too much like in you're that. one of those mm -hmm. right yeah right that's like if you hear like say for instance oh this uh i like to wear pearl clubs yeah you're straight oh no i, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't i don't i don't uh so you, i look at andrew pearl? like an andrew he's a taurus yeah so it's kind of like if i'm like oh he's a bull yeah you know that bull attitude uh -huh. okay but then i could look at the pros and the cons and go well he's yeah. loyal mm -hmm. loyalty yeah that's awesome you know what i mean but yeah. i don't 
base it on that like you know yeah. no that's too much the 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 main reason i don't like it is because i don't like how it takes the control out of our lives right because mm -hmm. it makes it almost seem like since you're that sign you have no control as to who you're going to be yeah. right like say for instance you're this sign so you're going to be uh always angry and stuff yeah. like that and not calm right mm -hmm. I'm always angry if I choose to be always angry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like if I say today, you know what? No, I'm going to live a lifestyle to where I control my anger and I'm going to be at a cool, calm, peace, mm -hmm. nice little balance in my mm -hmm. life. I'm going to do that. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And if no astrology is yeah. going to determine what I'm going to be. Exactly. Right? Yes. And that's why I don't really so mess with it. Mm -hmm. And that's weird because it's like you think too, like, you know how it says, I always lean back on God for, you know, yeah. you know me. Mm -hmm. um, but Oh, that's but why, that's why I'm a little Bible right here. Yeah, I, and I, he I has to... like, there's already a purpose. Yeah. Like you have a purpose in your life. Mm -hmm. Like you just have to find that, yeah. you know what I mean? But I think when we lean on astrology and all that, mm -hmm. like it takes away it takes from the purpose that. Out. Yeah, like, so I'd rather lean on God. Okay, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Yeah. What do I do instead of going, oh, I'm a Libra. Yeah. So I'm going to act like this or do this, yeah. you know? But look to the yeah, stars. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah. Um, the whole, even purpose, mm -hmm. the whole purpose in our lives. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy whenever you see somebody find their true purpose mm -hmm. and see that drive in them, mm -hmm. that nonstop attitude of persisting forward mm -hmm. to get to that purpose mm -hmm. because of that belief system. Right. Yeah. Like, say, for instance, I woke up, right? And I was like, my purpose is writing bulls on my life, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody looked at that and I was like, holy crap, that's kind of crazy, right? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know what? Go do this because mm -hmm. that it's just not, it's not right. Like that's, that's yeah. not safe for you, right? Like yeah. let's, let, let's go do, let's go do this over yeah, here. Yeah, try to but, convince you otherwise. But this person wakes up and he's like, no, my purpose is to get up and go ride bulls every day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And just to see that drive and see that determination from somebody to get to where he wants to be mm -hmm. or she wants to be, mm -hmm. et cetera, whatever, yeah. right? Whatever you define yourself nowadays, yeah. right? It rubs off on people too. Yeah. And it kind of it kind of motivates other people. Well, if he could do that, mm -hmm. why can't I do that with whatever yes. I want in my life? Exactly. Right? And then it's kind of like, how do we know for sure we're doing what we're supposed to do? Yeah. Is it a feeling like, oh, this feels right. I love it. I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. This is my purpose. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we all try to figure out, okay, is it? Is it not? Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. that's a question in itself. Yeah. But I think you have to be happy with what you're doing and enjoy it and love it. You know, mm -hmm. there's people out there, they do like missionaries or whatever, yeah. and they love it, you mm -hmm. know, and it's not about money or anything else. It's just the joy that they yeah. get off that. So yeah. um, there's coaches and they just love it. They're passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, they so love that, teaching the, yes, yeah. There's doctors, you know, and mm -hmm. my stomach can't handle it, but they yeah. can, you know, that's their purpose. So yeah. I think God just created everybody yeah. in their own image and to do what they need to do. It's crazy. Um, I think a lot of things are crazy. Mm -hmm. I really do think no, a lot of things are crazy. A lot of things are crazy, yeah, I especially me. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, that was know. time for that. Yeah, that was time for that little ding, ding, ding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you want to see which time. ones I got? You want to see which ones I got right here? Yeah. Okay, do that one. So, eh. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that one. That one. You like everybody's that one? Everybody's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Okay, everybody's crazy, especially me. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's crazy because I was just talking about talking mm -hmm. about this to somebody at the gym today. Mm -hmm. We had just gotten done sparring, or no, it was before we started sparring, right? Mm -hmm. And I told him why I loved boxing, right? Because yeah. boxing. Or whenever I was actively boxing, right? Like always training, always just, just staying ready, mm -hmm. you know? I felt more motivated to take on life. Mm -hmm. And I was telling this guy that I felt like the reason for that was because in boxing, you have to, like how I said, have that attitude to where you could persist and push forward mm -hmm. even though you're having literal iron punches thrown at you, yeah. right? You're having <clears throat> dudes in there who literally can crank their waist and throw a solid nice hook or a, a stra just a straight punch into your face, mm -hmm. right? And you still have to muster up the courage and almost be crazy to the point where you take it and then mm -hmm. just keep on pushing forward, right? Yeah. 
because you can't sit there and let somebody beat you up. You gotta, yeah. you gotta, you gotta fend for yourself in there. It's like it's only making you tougher. It's like stronger. the modern, yeah. It's like mm -hmm. the modern day gladiators, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you got, it's you like liver. Yeah, you mm -hmm. get in the ring with somebody, somebody who wants to hurt you. It's yeah. live or die. Mm -hmm. It's live or die. Yeah. And we're not trying to end up like no Apollo Creed yeah. out here. You know, we're not trying to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, but where I was getting with that is I was telling them how in that sport you got to push forward uh, and you constantly got to push forward, right? Yeah. And so you have that same attitude and that attitude that you carry in the ring will mm -hmm. translate into your life right mm -hmm. um whenever you go through some bs at work or some problems at home mm -hmm. right um you 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 kind of conditioned your mind to have that that attitude of okay i know that stuff is looking kind of rough right now yeah but it's not gonna break me yeah because there's way worse that could have broken me mm -hmm. but didn't yeah right mm -hmm. and so that's why i was telling him i was like that's a, it's it's I want to start getting back into it. Like, mm -hmm. I really want to. I actually, like I said, just got back from sparring. My head is kind of feeling like, oh, because it, it's been a minute kid. since I sparred. It's yeah. been a minute. The last person I sparred with was Ruben. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm just going to, ah. but, yeah, I but yes, I want, I want to get back into it, especially with this podcast and everything getting set up more than ever. Now I need that in my life because yeah. I need to push through. Right. I think that's your, I think that's, I want to say one of them because I feel like the gym constantly there working out is that's a passion that you have like yeah. that's your go-to mm -hmm. but i think that and boxing you stuck to like yeah. a lot so yeah. that's definitely a you thing so. yeah mm -hmm. and it's it's it's, it's funny because even if you don't become a boxer like yeah and even it's a, like a commentator mm -hmm. or a trainer or because you real this is the this is the thing that's sad right because whenever we're sitting there on saturdays watching these fights right of not these actual boxers, but mm -hmm. these influencer boxers, right? You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. How like these people on social media will get in the ring and they'll fight each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those will make really, really good uh, numbers when it comes to money. So you want to be an influencer boxer? I would, I would. I would or do you want to be a Julio Cesar Chavez? <laughs> so this is the thing, right? This is the thing. Oscar, Oscar de la Hoya. <laughs> I want to. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> I know. The, I don't know if I want to go there. Cause, right? No, because yeah, he's yeah. good, but he needs yeah, yeah. on the outside life. I, was I don't never know. A big, oh Lord, no. Well, no on the outside no life, Oscar, but I just right? wasn't that big of a fan. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the other girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some girls were like, Ooh. I was yeah, like, all, yeah, he's all, a good fighter. Guy guys over him. Yeah, not me. Right? Like, his fighting was good. Yeah, but just not. Yeah, no. Yeah, but with the <laughs> you're like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm good. No. <laughs> But with the whole um, with the whole influencer boxer and stuff like boxing and stuff like that, right? Yeah. The reason why I would actually give it the time of day to actually go and do, yeah, right, is because like how I said, mm -hmm. it brings in numbers, and the yeah. more this is the thing in boxing because boxing at the end of the day is a business. It's mm -hmm. not just two fighters getting in there. Mm -hmm. The way those fighters get paid is based upon how many viewers are attending into the fight, oh, right? Okay. And that's why it's so important for the promoters to actually step in and do their job and promote the fight, right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The reason why these influencer boxing matches generate a good amount of income mm -hmm. is because one influencer has a certain amount of audiences watching him mm -hmm. or audience members watching him. Mm -hmm. And then this other influencer has another amount yeah. of audience, a yeah. certain amount of audience watching mm -hmm. him, right? And so these two come together and they bring one big audience they to- They bring their numbers together. Uh -huh. and, their... and that's just without like the mm -hmm. whole promotion. Now, if they start promoting to people outside of their audience and mm -hmm. they're like, hey, look, we're gonna, I'm gonna go uh, get into a fight with this dude, yada, yada. They start trash talking and now everybody's like curious because they're yeah. like, ooh, I'm seeing okay, these two let's guys. let's see who's better. Yeah, who's gonna win, who's right? Gonna win. Mm -hmm. And they might not even be pro boxers, but as human beings, we're really interested in drama, right? Yeah, you have street fights out there. People yeah. run to go what's going to on. To go see we'll what see it what is, happens. right? Mm -hmm. And these two might not even be boxers. These two might be freaking bums. And so that's the, the, there, there's money in it. Yeah. And that's why since I have the skill and I have the experience in boxing, mm -hmm. why not? Yeah, you know? exactly. It's, Use it's, it. It's, it's, Try it. Yeah. Get those pay-per-view numbers. Mm -hmm. Get those pay-per-view numbers and then boom. There you go. Easy. Yeah, like promoter. That. Like that. Yeah, and then I'll boxing. go make mm -hmm. some wannabe boxer look look stupid. Because you don't you don't son. you don't just Let's you don't just you don't just get in there, man. <laughs> you don't just it. get in there. You gotta train for this stuff. You gotta train for this. I know. You gotta train I for know. this. Yes, I know. You've been training. You got <laughs> So yeah. you're going to look into that a little bit more? I think I'm going to look into it, but I can't do anything with it unless I get the numbers up on yeah. 
the, social media. Yeah, social mm -hmm. media. And then once I get the audience up and the viewers up, then that's when yeah. I'll actually be able to go out and do those things. But okay. another reason why I like boxing too is because it's just so warrior based and I'm really into the whole like samurai Spartans, um, mm -hmm. um, Aztecs and whatnot. That they're they're warriors, yeah. right? Especially Aztecs because of the whole cultural uh, but would background. That consists more of like more of more than boxing. What do you mean? Uh, martial arts, taekwondo. Yeah, and that's that, that's actually why taekwondo. <laughs> taekwondo. taekwondo. I said it because of Lion King. What? Doesn't say Lion King. I don't know if he says it on Lion King. Does he say Lion King? I think so. I Taekwondo. Think that's what... Imagine that. Lion King? Taekwondo. -do. Okay. Anyways, I anyways. have three little children. But okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why that, <laughs> I, I, I like the whole culture behind mm -hmm. two beings mm -hmm. going to war with each other, yeah. right? Into the whole Aztec culture, right? Yeah. The reason why I find that interesting is because have you ever heard of the death whistle? No. Oh, maybe I have, but remind me so the death whistle right mm -hmm. it's essentially this skull like whistle oh yeah literally yeah. a uh -huh. skull mm -hmm. whistle right and what the aztecs would do is they would use it for two occasions mm -hmm. right for either sacrificing their victims mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. to the gods mm -hmm. or going to war with their um their enemy right mm -hmm. and now the whistle here, let me let me let me show it to you real quick. Okay, show me because this is interesting. Uh, the and whistle? just imagine hundreds of these circled around it's already you. Already ugly. Mm -hmm. Imagine a hundred of these circled around you, mm -hmm. and these these just come out of nowhere, right? You just hear this out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Oh hell yep. no, that's straight evil. <laughs> that sounds like. Literally, just somebody. It sounds screaming, like somebody screaming, like right? A, like a torturous scream, like. Like I said, imagine a hundred of those. And these are people getting sacrificed, and then no, that so I'll get noise into that is right. coming out. I'll get into that right now, right? But going back to the whole what they would do to their enemies, mm -hmm. right? Their enemies would say, let's just say they're sleeping, right? And they're mm -hmm. all just asleep, laying there, and they're just waiting yeah. for the next day. Yeah. These Aztecs would circle around them, mm -hmm. right, from a far distance. That mm -hmm. way, they couldn't get them with their muskets or yeah. bow and arrows, whatnot, right? And they would just creep up on them and then just blow that whistle, mm -hmm. right? Put yourself in the enemy's shoe. You're like, what the heck's mm -hmm. happening, right? Mm -hmm. They did this to psychologically mess with their enemies, yeah. right? Mess and with now, their heads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now going to the sacrificial part, right? First off, the Aztecs believed that. In sacrificing a human to the gods, mm -hmm. their crops would grow more healthy, right? Mm -hmm. um, their kind would forever live on, right? Mm -hmm. And all in all, they would just get blessings from the gods if they did human sacrifices, right? Really? Yeah, crazy. Mm -hmm. And so what they would do is that they would bring a live body up to this top of a pyramid, right? Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched the movie Apocalypto. Mm -hmm. So literally they would do that, right? They would bring a human up to the top of the pyramid, lay them on this pillar thing right to mm -hmm. where they're kind of their body's kind of like bent mm -hmm. right and what they would do is the dude the like the i think it was like the priest or whatnot big old wardrobe mm -hmm. would get this spear and pierce it through the dude's chest right or whoever they're sacrificing yeah they would cut it open and they'll dig their hand into his chest grab his heart and then hold it up to the people how horrible uh-huh while exactly. this guy's alive right savage people yep and so after he would do that they would either just throw their bodies off the pyramid to the people, right? Or they would cut their head off and then throw their head and then throw their body, right? So these our our ancestors were crazy as hell, mm -hmm. right? Usually the people who were sacrificed were either people who volunteered, right? Because in volunteering, can I make a face again? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean volunteer? Right. So in volunteer volunteering, they literally believe that they were doing a good deed for the gods. Like, you know how people in the Middle East will literally blow themselves up? They literally believe that there was like 40 virgins waiting for them in yes. heaven. Yes. It's essentially the same thing, right? They literally believe that. Isn't that crazy how people could just get in people's heads? Right. That's the devil. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, God. Oh, my God. Quick sidebar. You know what I you know. sounded like when you said that? Ooh. You know, have you watched that movie with uh, Adam Sandler? Is it the water boy? Where his mom's all like, that's for the devil. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> I think it's the water she's like, re, re, I don't know what shit. Football's for the devil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to that. Right. <laughs> no. So 
that's 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 essentially what they did they would either do that with people who volunteered people who would volunteer or they would do it with uh people who they would capture from war right they would rather the aztecs would rather capture somebody because in capturing somebody they had more blood for the gods Mm -hmm. right yeah which meant more sacrifices didn't work yeah so to be caught by an aztec hell no you mm-hmm. you you yeah, i mean that alone is just ugly there's yeah. so much ugly in the world that we have no idea yeah like we could sit here and tell stories mm-hmm. but actually being in that situation in reality can yeah. you imagine like that feeling of fear yeah. ugly uncomfortable mm-hmm. scared all that craziness me and Natalia were watching the watcher we were watching the watcher <laughs> which one's that so the watcher on netflix right it's based on a true story to briefly yeah to briefly explain it right without giving away too many spoilers Mm -hmm. is that this family moves into a nice home right and they can't believe how how much the home was sold to them right holy crap this big old house was sold to us for this price yeah what it's too easy we're gonna buy it today (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna buy this house yeah yeah but little do they know they're gonna start getting notes and letters sent to them by this random stalker who they cannot figure out who it is right they mm-hmm. can't figure out who it is and the stalker ends up really really messing with them mentally right really? and it's starting to spread it and tear the family out. apart mm-hmm. or not right mm-hmm. and the more and more we get into it the more we start to think it's it's it's, it's i'm not i'm not gonna give away too much yeah yeah right? I, I think we were gonna start watching that the other day but that's pretty okay good. yeah pretty good uh, but anyways, there was this uh, quote that somebody said in there. Mm-hmm. He was like, back in my day, mm. oh, the more people went to church, the more we left the doors unlocked, right? Nowadays, people don't go to church and lock all their doors, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so we sat there and we had a really good conversation about that, right? She asked me what I thought about that quote. Mm-hmm. And I went on to give her this whole deep explanation about how the quote, how I felt about the Mm -hmm. quote, right? And I'm gonna give that explanation to you. Mm -hmm. The more people go to church, right? Mm -hmm. Would you say you're a product of your environment? Say for instance, right? I grew up in an area where everybody constantly did something, whether it was uh, boxing, whether it was selling Mm -hmm. drugs, Mm -hmm. whether it was Mm -hmm. um, becoming business owners, right? Mm -hmm. I just lived in an area where everybody in that area was doing something one thing Mm -hmm. right don't you think i'm gonna start to kind of adapt to that environment like everybody's doing this so Mm -hmm. let me try to let me to whether it's to fit in whether it's to just just because it's constantly around you 24 7 Mm -hmm. right you grow into it you grow into Mm -hmm. it right that quote really meant something meant something more deeper to me because how he said Mm -hmm. the more you're out of church and the more you're in this world and the product of this world you're scared you're living in fear Mm -hmm. you're locking your door you start to Mm -hmm. you start to adapt to the ways of the world but Mm -hmm. the more people who get to church the more we're going to see this world Mm -hmm. um start to look like a a better place a better place not 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 saying a perfect place yeah less fear yeah we're living Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, well, it, I, I, I feel that. like that's like that's truth. That's yeah. real. I mean, think about it back when people did have their doors open. They could sleep with their front door open with the screen door shut. You know, kids could sleep outside in the front yard, in the backyard, on the grass. Like yeah. They could do those things. Mm-hmm. There's so much trafficking, picking up, like all this craziness going on now that we have to be so protective of each other. And it's scary to think <laughs> that some people literally have a lust and a hunger for that. I know. I don't get how don't. somebody could be so evil and ugly. How, yeah, like, made, made, made like that. But usually, okay, so I heard a statistic, heard a statistic. I don't know if it's true or not. Mm-hmm. Well, it has to be true because it's a statistic. Yeah. Right? From law enforcement agencies and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But, and they see the most. Essentially, serial killers in America mm-hmm. are mostly men, right? Yeah. But a majority of the serial killers mm-hmm. who are guys, all grew up without a father in their life. I've heard that. It, it, it's pretty interesting because I don't, I don't, who, I don't that know. That tells you how powerful fathers can Father be. Father figures are. Yes, mm-hmm. to their children. Yeah. This is something that I think I sent you and I've heard it and I believe it. I think yeah. it was T.D. Jakes. Okay, T.D. Jakes. Where he, it was a video and he was saying how the devil loves men. Yeah. He comes to kill 
them, take them out because they're the stronghold. They're the head they're of the, the household. The, yes, they're the, and when I say authority, I'm not like, oh, demanding and evil and disrespectful. It's mm -hmm. just their authority. They're strong. They're our rocks. Yeah. Like they, they're supposed to train us up, you know, take yeah. care of the wives, the protectors, things like that. Mm -hmm. And he said the devil loves taking them out. Like the men, they start when they're babies. Because yeah. in the Bible, I guess there was a part where they had took out all the boys, yeah. the males, they killed them all. Mm -hmm. And then they work on the little kids, you know, they take the dads out of their lives because yeah. now the boys can't be men, you know? Mm -hmm. So they eliminate these men. Yeah, He eliminates these men mm -hmm. because he knows the strength, the power they have to be fathers yeah. to these young men and little girls yeah. that need their daddies, you know? Mm -hmm. It's crazy because mm -hmm. especially with this whole Andrew Tate talk, I know you don't personally like him. Um, <laughs> I... There's certain things that I do agree with, but then there's certain things I'm like, okay. Like, mm -hmm. I know it's for comedy purposes, right? Because in this space and in this field, uh -huh. uh, one way to essentially get your name out there mm -hmm. is to say the most obscure things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like, say, for instance, I will say the sky is blue, right? Mm -hmm. But if I over-exaggerate saying the sky is blue, you I'm just extra, extra about mm -hmm. it, right? Obviously, it's going to be, at, we're, we're drawn to extra at the end of the day mm -hmm. we're we're drawn to big loud yeah, right uh -huh. we go to magic mountain we see all these big rides right mm -hmm. it draws our interest because it's like wow it's so amazing right mm -hmm. so the more spectacular the more obscure we make ourselves mm -hmm. the more we're gonna get audience yes. uh members and we're gonna retain that mm -hmm. vision from people do i believe that he says certain things in a format to draw in a bigger audience Probably. I think so. I think it's more so for business purposes. Do I, I I do definitely believe that the men in society and the men in our culture, mm -hmm. right? Should how you said, like have that be be that rock. Yes. That's why that's <clears throat> but that's I why whenever I do make a whenever I make a a nice, healthy, beautiful family, mm -hmm. I wanna just take them. And then just go to the middle of the woods, right? <laughs> and go build myself a nice, luxurious cabin out there, mm -hmm. right? And just live the rest of my days in my cabin mm -hmm. with my boxing gym in my garage, right? Yeah. And just live life, right? Yeah. But what's crazy is because I had just got done telling Natalia a story about something that had happened to a teenage boy in a mm -hmm. cabin in the woods, right? Uh huh. Because that's it's it, when it comes to scary and creepy, right? Yeah, a cabin in the woods. It don't get no more scarier than that, mm -hmm. right? Because think about it: you're isolated, all alone in the middle of the woods. But is it scary because you watch so many scary movies in your life? It's scary. Or is it actually a beautiful place for people? So it is. That were it born should. and raised in that area. It should that be. don't watch horror movies. It should be that, right? <laughs> yeah. But we have a natural instinct to. Listen well, to society. A lot of no, no, no. A lot of people have a natural instinct to fear the unknown, right? Think mm -hmm. about it. Whenever we jump into the middle of the ocean, right, mm -hmm. and we're just floating right there, right? What's under me? We don't know what's up. Yeah. We're questioning what's under us. Therefore, that develops a certain amount of fear in our head, right? Mm -hmm. You're placed in the middle of the woods in the dark, mm -hmm. right, and you don't know what the hell is around you. What's right? coming out? Uh -huh. Yeah. So that fear of the unknown starts to raise your adrenaline and mm -hmm. you start to all in all get scared. But I don't think the woods is a bad place because if I did, I'm not going to take my family out. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to go live in the woods. That's yeah. why uh, this whole room, like how you said earlier, mm -hmm. is themed yeah. from the woods. Right? And like you said right now, like you can go out there and think, oh, it's the scariest place or you can actually look at it as a beautiful place. Yeah. God created nature. He created these animals. He created the trees, everything. You know what I mean? So yeah. you could look at it as a blessing. Like this is just beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah. But so people just, there's too many horror movies. This yeah. and that. We watch too much stuff that we're like, oh, something's going to pop out. Yeah. You know? So I want to I wanna tell you a story that I heard from this other YouTube creator. Mm -hmm. His account is called Mr. Ball. Ballin, right? Mm -hmm. He's this ex Navy Ballin, SEAL. Like balling? Ballin. B A L L E N. That's his last oh, name, okay, I think. Okay. Mr. Ballin. Ballin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And he's this ex Navy SEAL who basically tells these supposedly true occurrences that have happened, right? To him while he was no, in No, no, not, not to him. Uh -huh. To just people out, cases that have happened to people in uh, on this world, right? Okay. What well, did he witness these things or he's just No, no, these heard. are these are these oh, are okay. just like accounts okay. of what he's uh heard researched. Or, oh, researched. Okay, okay. Accounts okay. of what he's researched. Okay. Right? The stories that he tell, 
they're either stories about how people have uh, mysteriously disappeared, mm-hmm. uh, weird occurrences that are unexplainable, mm-hmm. right? Or just people who have like about serial killers and whatnot. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty interesting. That's why I like listening to his channel. Mm-hmm. But anyways, there's a story he told on there. It's about this teenage boy who went to his deceased father's cabin mm-hmm. in the woods mm-hmm. one last time before his mom sold it, right? Mm-hmm. But what he saw out there made him glad that his mom was selling the cabin, the cabin right? Uh-huh. So I'm going to tell you it. So like I said. Do you need a, do you let need me, a break? To... Let, me, let me get all my sniffles out real quick and then I'll tell the story. Okay, yeah, we've be... been feeling a little under the weather, a little sniffly and little. No, now that I got all the so sniffles out. So I've seen out... this though where if you do this, like up here on the bridge of your nose. Yeah. Like, okay, so you fill your bone. Yeah. Not the loose part. Okay. On the bone. And then if you push up on this part, <laughs> that's supposed to relieve a lot. I'm, of, I'm clipping that. I'm that's for sure clipping. That's supposed clip. to relieve a lot of your um, nasal <laughs> congestion in there. Yeah. Um, I think they're tra- waiting for the story. Oh, sorry. Okay. So like I said, this teenage boy, right, uh-huh. had just lost his father. And his father owned this cabin mm-hmm. in the woods mm-hmm. that would usually be used for family vacations, mm-hmm. just getaways, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. After his father had died, his mom had told him mm-hmm. that, hey, we're going to get rid of this cabin. So if you want, go take a visit, mm-hmm. um, do what you want before we get rid of it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so in wanting to stay at the cabin, just to kind of remember the good times that yeah, him and his family had it's had nasty. in there, mm-hmm. he took him and his dog um, over there, right? And so they get over there. And right away, they look in the snow and they see a bunch of fresh footprints outside. Mm -hmm. A bunch of fresh footprints outside. And they're wondering, hmm, that's weird. Yeah. Because the nearest neighbors to the cabin are miles away, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. And even better, those neighbors are older people. He was thinking, why would, why would, even if this is my neighbors, Mm -hmm. right? Which I highly doubt it is. Why would they be over here? They just brush it off, right? He just wanted to enjoy the weekend, go inside, boom, right? When he got there, he was just kind of, he didn't want to necessarily go out and go do everything because of the snow. He just wanted to stay in and just enjoy the cabin, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Later that night, him and his dog are asleep on the bed that's in the room, the second floor of the Mm -hmm. cabin, Mm -hmm. right? They're laying there. And all of a sudden, as he's asleep, the dog just jumps up. Boom, right? And he's just like looking around. He's like, oh, looking mm-hmm, around, right? Mm-hmm. But then eventually the dog stops and it looks towards the downstairs, towards the front door, right? Mm-hmm. The owner is like, what are you, what are you looking at, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's dark in the house. And so all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the dog just darts downstairs and he just starts clawing at the door. The owner thinks, okay, he, most likely he just needs to go to the restroom, yeah. right? He just needs to go to the restroom. Yeah. So he goes downstairs, puts slippers on, whatnot, right? Opens the door, mm. boom, uh-huh. and lets the dog out. But as soon as the dog goes outside, it just stands there and it looks at this tree, right? But it's dark. It's uh, the, the guy can't see nothing. He didn't bring a flashlight with him, right? Mm-hmm. And this tree but is like, can the, see the, 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 the tree is a ways mm-hmm. out, right? And so he's looking. He's like, what are you looking at, boy? He's just like, you know what? What the heck? No, this I can't do this, right? Mm-hmm. I'm in the cabin, middle of the woods. No, it's too dark for this. Yeah. I'm good. I'm going back upstairs. I'm good, chief. Yeah, I ain't going to deal with this, right? Yeah. And so he grabs the dog and he goes back upstairs. And he's like, no, we're, we're not doing this yeah. tonight. You, mm-hmm. come, you better come here because yeah. I ain't doing this, yeah. right? He's laying there in bed on the second floor, right? He's like, what the hell just happened? And then all of a sudden, he hear hooves on the top of the roof, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason he knew it was hooves is because the first initial thought he got whenever he heard that uh-huh. was, how the hell did a deer get on top of the roof, right? So he was just thinking, yeah. And imagine, uh-huh. this is a two-story house, mm-hmm. right? And there's no trees next to the house. The only trees that are around the house are pr- like- Pushed away. Uh-huh. Pushed away. Like, they're, like, they're, they're far uh, out the, from uh-huh. the house, right? And so he's like, how the hell did a deer get on the roof, right? Mm-hmm. And so- He's just hearing it and he's just like, what the hell? But then it just stops. On the second floor, there's a patio that leads outside, mm-hmm. right? So he opens the double doors to the patio mm-hmm. on the second floor, mm-hmm. grabs a flashlight, 
and he shines up right to mm -hmm. see if he can find anything because he's like what the hell was that mm -hmm. right can't find nothing so he's like what the hell he looks to the side right here right mm -hmm. he's like i don't see nothing out there just trying to find something that could have made yeah. that noise right and he keeps on looking eventually until he gets to boom the tree mm -hmm. right the same tree that has that branch mm -hmm. Now, when he points the flashlight in that direction on that tree, he sees a tall, lengthy man mm -hmm. crouched on the tree mm -hmm. branch, right? On that tree branch that's 20 feet up in the air, yeah. right? And there's a tree branch above him, right? And so he sees this man holding on to the tree branch above him like a mm -hmm. monkey, right? Mm -hmm. And this dude's jaw is wide open, right? And he's looking at him. He's looking at this kid, mm -hmm. right? And so instantly when he sees this, he's just scared, right? He's yeah, like, what like, the hell is that? Yeah. Like, whoa. Like, mm -hmm. And so in that, he drops his flashlight. And he's like, oh, shit, oh, shit. So he mm -hmm. picks it up real quick. The man's gone. Oh. <laughs> the like, man's literally right gone. Face. Yeah. He's like, what the hell? No. Yeah. Hell no, right? Yeah. Hell no. So yeah. then he grabs his dog real quick. He's like, hey, we're going back in here. We're going to yeah. go lay back there. Like, yeah. we're going to... I, I don't know why he just didn't get the hell out of I there. I know. Get in your car. Bye. Right. Bye. I would have been, <laughs> been out. Bro. Oh, ain't God. no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Right? right? <laughs> but no. So he decided, you know what? I'm just going to go lay back in bed. Put the covers over me. Uh -huh. I'm going I'm to hide. That's what I'm going to do. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to sleep. Just go to sleep. It's nothing. All of a sudden, he hears clicking. Not clicking, but tapping. Tapping. Uh-huh. On the window oh, around God. him. Uh -huh. Right? Here's that tapping from the left. And then it stops. Right? Mm -hmm. And then just as soon as it stops, it picks back up on the window on the other side of the house or the cabin. Yeah. Right? And he was just, he was just getting like, like, like trippy, the whole Aztecs, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He was getting psychologically mind. Yeah. He, messing with him. He was mentally, messing with him. Uh -huh. Right? But then out of nowhere, it all stops. And then he hears the doorknob jiggle downstairs. But he still didn't leave that night. So he eventually just ended up falling asleep. Yeah. Right? The next day after, he was like, okay, now we're going to go, right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm like, what? Right? Yeah. And then he looks outside one last time before he leaves. And this all is daylight around, already? Mm -hmm, and all around the house, right? He sees a bunch of footprints, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just circling around the house, right? Yeah. And then it goes all the way to that same tree where he saw the man. Yeah. The way this guy described it was he couldn't have been more glad that his mom sold the house. So he's like, there is somebody out here. This is yeah. great. So who told you, who told this story? So it, like I said, if you want to actually uh -huh. hear the in-depth story, I try to condense it as much yeah. as I can to uh -huh. save some time, yeah. right? But if you want to hear the in-depth story of it, mm -hmm. right, you can always go to this uh, creator's channel. His name is Mr. Ballin, M-R-B-A-L-L-E-N, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So then, how does that make you feel that you want to go go buy a house in the woods? I like to. I like to. Does that change your mind? It doesn't change my mind at all. Because at the end of the day, I know that if something were to happen, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go get my freaking M17, <laughs> my Glock. I'm gonna I'm not gonna go back I'm, to bed. No, because I'm not. I'm going to. You're yeah. No. This this katana right here, you see, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go it? show some tall guy what's up. <laughs> right. I better. You better get your ass down that tree. Come down here. Come down here. Say oh, what's up. I know. Say You're, what's up. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> right know. you're like uh, no play. hell no yeah but I'm no just... it doesn't change my thought because i i like i always said i've always wanted to mm -hmm. get out there and go to the woods you know because that's yeah. that's it's the I, I i like it more than being here in the mm -hmm. city no, um, I know. the city life is just too i i i, I personally think it is like andrew tate mm -hmm. says godless it is godless. Definitely godless. It's yeah. godless. And mm -hmm. I feel like being in nature and being in the woods and just living over there is just so, it, so it's peaceful. What, I, what, one good point he has there. Yeah. Yeah, godless. Because, yeah. I mean, living out there in the woods, slowing down a little bit yeah. in life. Yeah. You know, when it comes to the kids, you know, and seeing all this nonsense and growing up too fast yeah. or, you know, things like that. But you have to... You have to go out there before you have a family, though. Oh, you have to adjust yeah. well. You have to learn how to live that life. You yeah. have to. So your babies grow up there, mm -hmm. and they know how to deal with it. So going back to that movie, because how you said how these babies want to grow up too quick, yes. right? Yes, oh, Lord Jesus. Going back to the show The Watcher, mm -hmm. there's, um, <laughs> there's essentially a scene in there, right? Mm -hmm. Multiple scenes mm -hmm. where... This daughter who's 15 years old, mm -hmm. right, is starting to wear 
sleeveless shirts, mm-hmm. right? Tube tops. Um, where you could see the bra line. Oh yeah, right yeah. here. Little spaghetti straps. Spaghetti straps, right? And she's starting to wear makeup and lipstick and whatnot, mm-hmm. right? And the dad, which I believe he has a very good point in the show, mm-hmm. is all like, "Why? Why are you doing that? You're still young. Like, grow up. Wait, don't, don't, don't." don't look to grow up so fast yes, right yes. like take your time right yeah and me and natalia were talking about that mm-hmm. or we were talking about if the dad was right or not yeah me as a male who understands what it's like to think like a male, a male. when uh-huh. it comes to and what draws a male's interest to a female mm-hmm. when it comes to a female's dynamic a figure or whatnot right yeah what certain things turns a male on right I have every, I was explaining to her that I have every much of a right to let her know that, hey, that could put you in a dangerous situation, Mm -hmm. right? Because I basically gave her this example, right? Let's just say you were to put a in a room with 10 women, Mm -hmm. right? This is a very hot topic. Very hot topic. So watch what you say. Right. Not in my very, I I probably agree with you, but I'm just saying a lot of viewers are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And controversy is what gets your name out there, right? Uh As long as it's good controversy. Mm -hmm. But anyways, let's just say you put a in a room with 10 females, Mm -hmm. right? Nine of these females are covered up head to toe, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They're not showing excessive skin. They're Mm -hmm. just all covered up, right? But one of the female is one of the females showing is too much skin no no not even too much skin right let's just say it could be as simple as showing like her bra strap mm-hmm. and her shoulders mm-hmm. right and her like upper chest right mm-hmm. which one of those females do you think the is gonna go for so i don't like to and i'm not gonna try to think like a but i think a, a mentally ill person would go for the one who's showing more skin so i think it's both because I feel like, yes, men are drawn to more skin. Oh, look at the way she's flashy, this and that. But at the same time, I think a weird, crazy person is going to just a female anyways. Or you know what I mean? But yes, do I agree more with a mm-hmm. female that is dressed less? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because, because you're showing. There's no modesty there. You're not yeah. being modest. You're not covering up. You're not, mm-hmm. you know. You're being more open and that calls for attention. When you wear less clothes or you show more skin, you're calling for attention. Yeah. But again, that could be a hot topic yeah. because a lot of girls, we get hot. We're like, oh, I want to put a tank top on because mm-hmm. it's too hot or whatever. Yeah. But again, it's it's either or. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was funny because in the, sh- in the show, it was the reason why we wanted to talk about mm-hmm. it is because in the show, you see the wife kind of telling the husband, hey, oh, don't you think you're being too hard on her? Right. Yeah. The or, wife was? Yeah, the wife was and then the and then the daughter was like dad like just every yeah, teenage yeah, yeah. daughter dad, mm-hmm, leave me alone mm-hmm. blah, blah, whatever right yeah and they were saying it to him as if he was telling her hey i don't want you to go in the ocean because there's a shark out there and, yeah. and i don't want you to do that right yeah. like trying to control every aspect of his mm-hmm, life right mm-hmm. however i was telling Natalia that when it comes to this aspect mm-hmm. of telling you how guys operate and how certain guys um get turned on by women yeah right mm-hmm me being a guy myself, mm-hmm. I should have every right to advise my daughter that, hey, if you dress a certain way, mm-hmm. going out in public could be very risky because there's a lot of You weird have people. to tell your daughters that. You yeah. have to let them know mm-hmm. to be aware of that. Yeah, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of mentally ill people out there mm-hmm. who will see that skin that you're showing, mm-hmm. that self-confidence skin that you're showing yeah. to make you feel good and look mm-hmm. good, right? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Right? But don't blame a mentally ill person or a psycho when he chooses you over this girl yeah. who is dressing up Because you're properly. being so exotically, yeah. yeah. I watched, um, his name's Jerry Flowers. I believe he's a pastor, him and his wife yesterday. I watched a sermon and they were speaking on that. And it was for married couples, Yeah, but it also pertains to that. Um, and the wife was saying, cause she was giving her point of views and then he was giving his point of views yeah. and she was saying as a wife, even single ladies, she told him, she goes, you need to hide your skin. Like mm-hmm. you need to be modest. You need to have respect for yourselves because when you don't and you're showing skin, she's like, you're asking for attention. Oh, let me see if I could get a guy like this. Let me see if he'll, I'm attractive enough. She goes, but you need to cover yourself up, be modest and let him like you for you. And whatever you have underneath there, that's for your husband, mm-hmm. for you and him to share. 
And she goes, even me, he's my husband. Mm -hmm. I cover up out of respect for him because mm -hmm. everything underneath this belongs yeah. to him, mm -hmm. not to the next man to see. Yeah. She goes, and I notice a lot of married women will still be very like flaunty and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. the husbands don't say anything yeah. and they like it because they're showing off their trophy mm -hmm. wives or whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, us females, we need to be more modest and that doesn't happen these days yeah. a lot anymore. And again, falls back on the fathers mm -hmm. is the father in the home to teach them is the father in the home to uh voice his opinion in that area yeah. to teach his daughters like stop don't do that mm -hmm. teach them modesty you know i know it's the mom's role also but yeah. men have that control even over their daughters and when i say control it's not a bad thing yeah. because again that's controversial where people will be yeah. like oh control control whether they like it or not, like yeah. they have their own opinion. Yeah, have, whether whether yeah, you like it or it, not. It, it, look, it, I'm being nice about whether it. Whether you like it or not, goddammit. It. it is what it is. It you is what, what it is. Like you want your daughter to dress less, that's oh, yeah. on you. When you get phone calls, that's on you. Talk Me, talk. I'm going to tell my daughter, girl, you're going to cover up. Cover because up. Because I'm trying to cover my daughter Hell like, yeah. from ugly predators. Let you know. know what I mean? I'm not... You know let me. Him, I'm, I'm being so nice him, right him, now. Him I'm know. being so nice because I'm on camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Hell just yeah. Kidding. Let's go. Let's go. No, but seriously, I mean, it's gonna. It, every viewer out there has their own opinion and stuff. But even me, what I feel is your daughters need to cover up. Yeah. We as wives need to cover up. Yeah. Single women out there, yeah, looking for a husband or not, you need to cover up mm -hmm. because that makes you different, also. Yeah. And then. You know, they respect like, oh, wait, she's not all flashy. She's mm -hmm. all cool, quiet, modest over there. That turns men on too, yeah. you know? And I think what the, the well, no, the reason why. In the right way. Turn right. men on the right way. Like, yeah. oh, I like her. She respects herself. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why we were talking about it even more so when it came to that show, mm -hmm. The Watcher. Yeah. Right. The reason why we were talking about that is because like how I said, the wife was kind of telling the father don't you think you should be like a little more lenient on her mm -hmm. like like as if the father yes. did not know what he was talking about right yeah, yeah. like he wasn't experienced in the male, male field yeah he's yeah. an actual he, man you listen to him before so even you listen to mom. so even more so like he like like how that authority to say listen to me i'm telling you because my eyes, like it's not I have even, man eyes. at that it, at that point it's not even like it, it like yes authority does matter but it's not even authority at that point because think about this right if you had a boy at school who were to come up to mm -hmm. you right and a girl at school who were to come up to you right yeah and a girl tells you oh this is how guys uh will perceive you right mm -hmm. but then a guy tells you this is how guys will perceive you yeah who are you gonna believe mm-hmm you're gonna believe the guy yeah because he's an actual guy yeah and can exactly. tell and can speak Hello. on the guys yeah. right yeah. It, it, and it's this just, is the it's thing illogical. like you said the it's numbers illogical. the numbers say it all yeah. like most of the rapists or mm -hmm. men predators whatever are yeah. male figures right yeah so you're gonna hear it from the male person yeah versus the female in a sense not that they're all rapists no not, but not that. yeah again like it is what it is god created them created you guys yeah. Men, you know what I mean? A certain mm -hmm. way. And you guys have, of course, roaming eyes. It doesn't mean that you're lusting the whole time over there. Yeah. But, you know, you guys are males. You yeah. know, we're created different. We're and female. so we understand how other males <laughs> yes. operate. And it's, just, and it's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's just you guys are preparing us females to be like, no, just cover up. And that's where we yeah. should listen yeah. to the male figure that has the right mindset to say cover up yeah and trust yeah you know especially fathers with their daughters but yeah yeah so we'll yeah well we've been running for a good minute so okay good we yeah will, her parents run christmas yes. shopping yes 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 oh, I, I definitely Lord. do want to have you back on though because yeah. this was a nice conversation there was a lot of topics in between that we could have talked about yes there was so many topics we could have yeah. gone on forever. i know i wanted to bring this up but then i went mm, that's another yeah. topic mm, that's yeah. another topic yeah um, so, so but what was the purpose of the my the aztec thing did we finish that topic We'll see when we rewind. We'll see. <laughs> That's oh, we'll like. see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Thank you okay. for watching Wolf to Wolf podcast. You know, the, by now you've heard millions of YouTubers tell you the whole shenanigan. Subscribe, like, da, 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 da. you know what to do. Yeah, you and know what let to me do. Know if you like mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let 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 <laughs> let, 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 her, let him know. Let, let the go if, in the comment section. Yeah, was mom cool? And was and let us know. Do you want chill? mom back on? Was I'm, she vibing? No. Where, was she? <laughs> <laughs> anyways, vibing. you guys have a good one.